Hello everyone and welcome to One Civil Law, where we learn through the misfortunes of others. If you're enjoying our content, please remember to subscribe and hit the notification bell to get alerts as to all of our content. For today's story, we're dealing with digital assets and what happens when someone takes money for the assets and then deletes the assets. Do they have to give the money back? This is the case of Jane Doe, a minor, versus Roblox Corporation. In this case, Roblox runs a game where people can buy stuff with real money. And some of the stuff that people buy is found to be infringing. So then the stuff they buy, these digital assets are deleted, but Roblox keeps the money. So there's something maybe perhaps unfair about that, or is there? In any case, we're going to read about the complaint, which involves miners buying stuff, and then the miners not getting the stuff that they bought, or at least not for very long. Let's get started with this. Defendant Roblox is one of the largest and fastest growing gaming platforms in the world, designed to bring users together in a virtual universe or a metaverse. Developers create games and experiences, which are then populated by user-created avatars. Users play games, explore universes, and purchase items made by developers in a virtual marketplace. Roblox makes money when users purchase digital content for their avatars to use in this virtual universe. While the COVID-19 pandemic forced the closure of brick and mortar businesses across the globe, the market for defendant Roblox's parodic surged as the digital world offered the only escape to people forced to stay home. Roblox's revenue jumped 68% in the first nine months of 2020, and its user base surged an 82% number. The vast majority of these users share one key characteristic. They are children. At least 70% of Roblox's users are under the age of 18, with more than half of all of its users being under the age of 13. And those children spend enormous amounts of time and money exploring Roblox's world day in and day out. Now, the immediate question that comes naturally to mind is, when they're spending money, whose money? Because they're under the age of 13, or at least half of them are, and 70% are under the age of 18. So I'm guessing that it's not necessarily, strictly speaking, their money from allowances or chores and stuff. Like. Something tells me that they're using mom and dad's credit card. And mom and dad might have an interest in this, potentially. So I wonder if they are being supervised at all, or if they're just able to spend money freely, completely. So that's the first thing that makes me wonder. It's like, who's supervising this on the child's end? Makes you wonder at least a little bit. However, even though the loyalty of millions of children has turned Roblox into a wild success during a time when many other businesses have suffered, Roblox systematically takes advantage of its customers. Despite its short and relatively new existence, Roblox has already earned significant negative attention as a dangerous space for its predominantly child-focused user base. For instance, there is a legion of complaints and publications describing how Roblox's child users are exposed to predatory conduct from other, primarily adult users on the platform, including simulated violence, simulated adult relationships, simulated involuntary adult relationships. A lot of these things are happening on these platforms and people are unaware of what's happening. Again, one wonders a little bit about the adult supervision angle. Now, I certainly appreciate that adults may not be watching their kids every minute of every day, nor is that necessarily healthy. At the same time, I wonder the degree to which the parents are completely absconding and not wondering about what their children are spending many, many, many hours on, not checking at least periodically to see what's going on. If the adults are unaware that this is happening, that might be just a little bit on the adults' lack of supervision. Maybe the children should be supervised a little bit more carefully, especially if they're under the age of 13, especially if they have the ability to spend parents' money. One would think the combination of incentives would make people aware of this, but apparently not, because apparently this is happening without anyone taking notice. So, you know, that's just super all the way around. The trick is simple. Roblox encourages users to purchase in-game content on the platform which it has made available, and from which Roblox earns real money without performing any meaningful oversight to ensure that the content coming into its marketplace complies with its platform policies. After its users have paid for their purchases, Roblox then performs sham content moderation by deleting content which it has determined violates its policies. Roblox then refuses to refund anything to its users for their deleted content. So that would be the, the key controversy, right? They get to keep the money after they've deleted these digital assets that someone has bought because the assets are in violation of their terms and service. 
But they say, well, we're not, they're saying, well, you're not doing enough on the front end to check to see that. You're just doing it all on the back end after you've already taken their money. I guess we're going by the Ferengi rules of uh, acquisition. Ferengi rule of acquisition number one. Once you have their money, you never give it back. Once you have their money, you never give it back. Roblox apparently has learned this lesson. Exactly. When users rep report that their content has disappeared in error and demands refunds, Roblox cleverly deflects its irresponsible, profit-seeking behavior by alleging that the content violated prof platform policies without actual detail, offering Roblox cover to engage in fraudulent content deleting schemes. Even more problematic is defendant's deletion of content that does not appear to violate any policies whatsoever and appears to be only an arbitrary choice to remove content from circulation, thereby creating demand to buy new content. The result is a win-win for Roblox. Removing any content that may on its face violates its policies earns Roblox the appearance of content moderation while dovetailing with financial interests. The scheme allows Roblox to deflect lame for deleting user content without issuing refunds, forcing users to make new purchases to replace their in-game experience. So yeah, this is obviously written from the position of people who want to sue Roblox. You know, the, the way this is framed is framed in a very particular way. Roblox is the big baddie. They, they get the money on the front end, then they delete the content, then they get money from people having to buy new content to replace the content that they used to buy, which they then might delete circle repeats, you know? So Roblox here is just engaged in a perpetual scheme of selling snake oil or allowing snake oil to be sold, I guess more properly, because it's not necessarily Roblox themselves that is selling it. It's people that are selling it on their marketplace. But like any like any merchant or any marketplace, you know, they it's not like the, the stores at the mall get to just be there for free, right? They have to pay to the mall. And that can come in a variety of different ways. Sometimes it's rent, sometimes it's profit sharing. There can be all kinds of arrangements depending on the nature of what's ever, right? So in this situation, Roblox is the mall or the bazaar, perhaps to put it more appropriately. And they're allowing the various merchants to come in and they get a cut as the people facilitating this. And then after the work, after the, the, after the fact, they check the bags as their people are walking out and say, oh, well, that violates our policies rather than going in and checking the marketplace on the front end. Or so the allegation goes. I think Roblox probably has some alternative facts they'd like to suggest about the moderation they do do on the front end. And this is not a fair characterization, but, you know, we'll have to wait for their response to see how fair or not this characterization is, I suppose. Created in 2004, Roblox is an interactive metaverse that creates a new category of human interaction. It doesn't sound that new to me. It sounds like Second Life, but okay. An average of 36.2 million people from around the world migrate to Roblox daily to interact in a 3D digital world that's entirely user-generated, built by a community of nearly 7 million developers. More than half of the users are under the age of 13, and the users average 2.6 hours on the site daily that's a lot of time, man. Not that not that I'm one necessarily to cast stones because I spend more time than that doing things, but just saying 2.6 is a notable amount of time. More than twice the amount of time these users spend on popular social networks, such as TikTok. So apparently they have statistics from wherever on how much time people spend on TikTok and other social networking people like spending, people are spending more than twice the amount on Roblox. Okay. The platform consists of two primary layers, the Roblox client and the Roblox studio. The Roblox client is an application that allows users to explore 3D digital worlds through the eyes of an avatar, while, while, which each user customizes with clothing, gear, animation, stimulated gestures, emotes, and other objects. The Roblox studio is a tool developer's kit and creators use to build, publish, and operate 3D experiences and content for the client including the aforementioned objects in which they sell in a user-to-user -user marketplace known as the Avatar Shop. Defendants earn money in part from taking a commission as the people supplying it. So they're taking a cut of the proceeds, as well as by offering its own content. So they do offer their own content for sale, and they also take a cut of what everyone else has to offer. Well, what kind of things can you buy on the Avatar Shop? Well, here is a figure one that shows some of the items that you apparently can buy on the Roblox shop for your avatar. You can buy a Zara Larson outfit, presumably. Crystal North, a flower crown for Zara Larson, 
a Zio backpack, a white summer hat, rose gold sunglasses, and a violet Valkyrie, among other items that are available for sale on this avatar shop, which you can buy with actual real dollars. So fun. Underscoring everything on the platform and representing the core revenue generator for Roblox is the exclusive in-game currency known as Robux. I, I suppose Sears is bankrupt, so they're in no position to argue, I guess. Roblox offers for sale vast quantities of its in-game currency. For instance, players can purchase 400 Robux for $4.99 or 10,000 Robux for $99.99. Users receive additional promotional Robux if they subscribe and purchase on a rotating, rotating basis. So yeah, we, we can buy virtual currency with real currency at various price points. And it looks like you get a slight price break as you buy more. So fun. With most schools in the United States operating remotely in the last year and play dates on hold due to the COVID-19 pandemic, kids have increasingly turned to Roblox platform for community. According to a survey conducted by Roblox, 52% of teens say they spent the same or more time with real life friends via Roblox and other online games and voice chat than in person. Well, in this past year, I, yeah, because the in-person thing has been kind of impacted. 40% survey said the platform improved their online friendships. Users can communicate via live chat, which chats for players 12 and under are filtered. So apparently uh, players 12 and under can't chat, which is 50% of their users. One wonders how well that chat filtering is really working, but okay. Throughout this company's short history, however, there have been incidents of lewd behavior and failures to program systems allegedly designed to monitor this behavior. Such scandals include so-called condo games, showing naked avatars engaging in forms of adult relationships and using profane language. One journalist observed that one virtual condo game then showcased an array of toys for adult enjoyment. The private room upstairs was furnished only with beds. The basement was a torch lit adult playroom dungeon. Super fun. So you can find everything it is that you want on the Roblox, including some uh, including some dungeons if you're into that kind of thing, which probably you shouldn't be if you're under the age of 13, but you know, whatever. Roblox created structures to monitor for and remove these condo games, but the public quickly identified various techniques to get around the filters. No joke. No joke. Yeah, every time an internet company creates a filter, users try to outsmart the company to get around the filters. It becomes a cow and mouse thing, right? Journalists have chronicled this war on the adult contact taking place on the platform, which is largely losing, which is not that particularly surprising, right? It's like, oh, we want, to, we want as an internet company to do a war on pornography. You know, that's uh, challenging uh, for the best of companies. Uh, you know, people are endlessly creative. To, to quote Jurassic Park, life will find a way. So the, the, the war has been uh, not going as successfully as might be desired. But then again, it doesn't go that well pretty much anywhere because, you know, when people people demand certain things, those things will exist, black market or otherwise, right? So, okay, they're trying, I guess. All right. Roblox players purchase items for their avatars through the avatar shop. There, users can purchase and equip their avatars with anything from a new hairstyle to an eye patch, clothing, and more fantastical items like horns and weapons. Users and developers sell items in the avatar shop. Items range in price from one Robux up to seven, several million Robux for several items such as limited edition items offered for sale by Defendant Roblox itself. And apparently here are two such items at two vastly different price points that are available for you. So we have a, a item that's offered by a user called Mad Creations. It's a formal attire, which we're spelling with an extra E for some reason. Formal attire for Kansas, which you can get for the low, low price of five Robux. Uh, however, for uh, the Roblox also has something called Lord of the Federation, which is a hat. It's a hat. And it's available for the low, low price of 618,033,000 Robux. 
988 Roblox. 618 million. Well, let's see. I can buy 10,000 of them for $100. And this costs 618 million for a hat, a virtual hat for my virtual avatar. Uh, okay. Um, uh, this is just, I'm going to just go ahead and suggest that in this, in this person's humble opinion, this does not strike me as a good purchase decision. Uh, if for the equivalent of 618 million Roblox, you know, you could buy lots of things. So probably not so much with the 16, $618 million hat. Roblox users expect the items they purchase are usable on the platform and will remain in their inventory absent any violative conduct by the user. Implicit in this expectation is the understanding that content violating trademarks or platforms community standards will not be available for purchase. However, Roblox employs extremely lax content moderation when content is initially added to the avatar shop for purchase. Indeed, Roblox elicits the appearance of content moderation by taking allegedly volatile content down, but only after users have already purchased it. As a result, some users sometimes have only a fleeting moment to enjoy their newly purchased item from the avatar shop. Well, I guess that's not going to happen with the Lord of the Federation pointy crown since it's sold by Roblox. So you get to enjoy your 618 million Roblox hat. So, yeah. Uh, at Roblox has lead items days, months, and even years after the user made the purchase. Worst of all, Roblox refuses to refund or credit accounts after it's deleted these items. Uh-huh. Roblox supposedly deletes items deemed inappropriate or in violation of intellectual property rights, such as clothing items featuring the Nike logo. But Roblox does nothing to prevent these items from being sold in the first place. Uh, I mean, I, I, it's not inherently obvious what they could do to prevent them other than moderating every single item before it's put it for sale, which maybe they should do. Maybe that's exactly the problem. They should, they should vet every single item on their own store before it comes through. Now, you know what the response is going to be right away from Roblox, right? You know what the answer is going to be to this. CDA 230, right? Right? We are merely providing a platform, right? Now, now what's interesting about that is it, the CDA 230 doesn't extend to intellectual property protections. So if Nike wanted to sue Roblox for the, for the intellectual property violation, they actually could because CDA 230 has a carve out there. But as long as, as long as Nike themselves doesn't want to sue, then Roblox can just continue to do this and say, well, we're not a provider, so, you know, whatever. So that's going to be part of their answer. And there's going to be counters responses to that. But they'll be like, yeah, we're, we're just merely performing the platform. Go sue the people that made it available if you can find them, right? Yeah, okay. Roblox sham content moderation is nothing more than a cover-up for its attempt to generate additional revenue from its users, which are predominantly children. In fact, Roblox routinely removes content that doesn't on its face appear to violate any of the policies, and its structure for moderating content fails to do so with consistency, accuracy, or any transparency. I'm sure their terms of service are written so broadly that they are not necessarily required to do it consistently, accurately, or transparently. So that's going to be the other end of this argument, right, from Roblox, is terms of service. Yeah. What it takes the drastic measure of reducing and removing purchase content from a user's inventory. Roblox offers no explanation of which policy the item actually violated, how it makes those determinations, or how to appeal. I see their terms of service coming into rapid focus. It's like without even reading their terms of service, I have a pretty good idea what they say because I've read a fair amount of terms of service. Rule of acquisition 17, a contract is a contract is a contract, but only between Ferengi. And I know what they say in general. And I'm like, okay, if I'm their lawyer, what do the terms of service look like, right? And it's like, yeah, we can we can take down content anytime we want. We can put it up anytime we want. Your content has no value. This service is made without warranty, express or otherwise, blah, blah, blah. Throw in some additional language, you know, you're halfway home. And also while we're at it, you have to arbitrate everything because why not, you know? So yeah, I, I'm, I'm guessing that will be some of the defenses coming from Roblox. Of course, defendant's decision to first sell first and moderate later 
has an obvious monetary benefit. By the time defendant has deleted items from an avatar shop and user's inventory has already taken its 30% commission. Roblox retains all the benefit after deleting items while its players are left with nothing. The ninth rule of acquisition clearly states that opportunity plus instinct equals profit. And now we have a picture of, I guess, one of these in infringing items uh, well, who was sold by Solo Clothing Maker for the low price of eight Roblox, which, you know, given some of the prices we're talking about, you know, so it's a blank tech top, but it's a blank tech top with a Nike swoosh on it. So, you know, you have been deprived of your eight Roblox for this, this shirt. Yeah. Furthermore, Roblox takes no additional actions to moderate developers who constantly create content for sales in the shop, even if Roblox constantly continuously deletes that developer's items. Roblox knows and appreciates the biggest offenders of its platform policies are also its golden goose that drives its revenue. So we are essentially alleging that they have a conflict of interest. You know, they have the, they have, they, or they have, they have incentives to do things this particular way. Cause it's like, well, if we don't, if we prevent the sale in the first instance, right, we don't get the money. So if we prevent the sale, we don't get the money. But if we allow the sale and then say, hey, that sale violates our terms of service and our, our terms of service probably say something like, if you purchase an item that violates our thing, you know, you agree that this will be forfeited with no re re rep 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 recompense to you, right? Something like that. So, you know, that's the terms of service in CDA 230. It's just all those things coming into mind. I'm sure they've thought about all these issues long in advance. So we'll see if the, the, and also probably some arbitration stuff and all the rest of it. So we'll see if we, if they can get past all that language, but yeah, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll have to see how it develops. Okay. Now we have figure seven, which apparently shows two entire pages of featured items that have been deleted from one developer. The developer has many more pages showing content deleted. So solo clothing maker who I believe it's the same company that was selling that black, the, the Nike swoosh check mark has had a whole bunch of things deleted. Roblox also fa fo focuses its content moderation on best selling and most popular items. Apparently, it has moderated eight of its 10 best selling items. So, of the best selling items of all times, there's a whole bunch of stuff that we've deleted for various prices. So, yeah. If this content moderation scheme was enough, Roblox goes even further to intentionally lure users into purchasing items it knows violates its policies that will inevitably be removed. Roblox recommends similar items next to previously moderated items, which often contain the same intellectual property violations. For instance, next to a previously removed Nike tank top, Roblox recommends that users also purchase a vintage gray Nike sweater and other clothing items violating it. So here we have this picture of this Nike tank top, which has been deleted. And then it goes through to recommend some other items, which, yeah, looks like some of them at least violate the same, the same thing on the same terms. But the 22nd rule says a wise man can yield profit in the win. So in some system, it's recommending this. Now, whether or not they know that, strictly speaking, I don't know, because the system is probably automated, but they, they at least would have an, uh, an idea of where to look. Right. If if it's if this one thing is violating, here's a whole other recommended items. They have an idea of where to go look and they're not doing that. So there is that the best descriptions of Roblox's content moderation scheme come from the company's own employees. One former employee recounted the manager that was in charge of us demanded that we each have a set quota on the amount of content and accounts moderated each day. Even goes so far as to ban users off the platform who had clearly done nothing that violated our trust and serve safety policies. The way we're required to treat platform users with clearly false reasons of termination of service just to meet a required quota, a manager's told us to meet. If we couldn't do it with legitimate reasons was the last straw. So apparently we have one former employee who is saying in some sort of whistleblower fashion that they were moderating things for the sake of moderating even if they didn't need to be moderated. And they have policies and practices to that effect. So there might be something there that might be a potential bore to be able to get to some sort of liability for the company, but still the, the, I'm betting the terms of service are so broadly written. It's like, yeah, we have the right to moderate at any time for any reason, you know, our sole discretion, you have no recourse, all that kind of stuff, right? The, the terms of service are, are unsurprisingly going to be written to favor Roblox as widely as the law will allow. So 
I, I, I'm not sure how long th this is going to succeed, but we'll give it a try and see if it works anyway. Okay, so now we want to sue for a whole bunch of specific things. We want to sue for unfair competition, prohibiting any unfair fraudulent business practice in any area of deception, false fraud, products, and misrepresentation. Yeah, I mean, maybe. Uh, the CDA 230 is going to be a problem here, um, but they to try to get this under California unfair competition law by saying that they're structuring the thing to, to facilitate and there's something of false pretense or description or misrepresentation, Maybe. It's a, it's a tough sell, but they might be able to get there. Injunctive release for violations of the act. So we want some injunctive release relief to set forth prohibited items. So we want them to stop them from doing this, which totally makes sense. If you want to, you know, we want to redress the past and also prevent this from happening in the future. Third cause of action related to fraud. So we want to allege that there is a fraud in this so that they are being sold under knowing false pretenses. So that constitutes a legal fraud. Uh, again, they, they you'd have to go show their specific knowledge. And the, the fact that they're allowing fraud to happen is still a CDA 230 thing because of the way the, the rules are, are written. You know, it's not them conducting the fraud. It's just saying, here's a marketplace, buyer beware. So you have to show that they themselves through the structure or the marketplace or something are are facilitating fraudulent conduct. Fourth cause of action for conversion, we took their money. Fifth cause of action, unjust enrichment. You got rich in a way that isn't fair. So you stole our stuff is conversion. You have gotten rich in an unjust way is unjust enrichment. So yeah, that makes sense as a legal theory. Steer the road, the greater the profit. 60 second rule. That's right. And then we want an order certifying the class, declaring that, the, you know, violates these rules. And we want a whole bunch of awards and we want a jury trial. I don't know, man. We'll see how it goes, but uh, Roblox might have the better end of it. It's go it's going to be a tough slog, and I'm sure they're aware of it. We'll wish them all the luck for all it's worth. Thus, that brings us to the end of the complaint in the case of Jane Doe versus Roblox. In this case, Jane Doe, a minor, is suing for a class action, saying that Roblox is committing fraud and deceptions against its consumer base by not doing sufficient moderation, if any moderation, on the front end and only doing moderation on the back end, not giving any money back for fraudulent purposes, and basically creating their own revenue source. So that's a lot of stuff. Now, as I point out throughout this, Roblox has some pretty promising defenses. And CDA 230 in terms of use are gonna be the most obvious, and that, they did, that they're not necessarily sanctioning it, and that users are, are, in their terms of service, I'm guessing, required to determine whether or not it violates terms of service or otherwise. You do have this one quote from this one employee who says they were terminating users even when they didn't have it, which might suggest some sort of improper conduct. So if that can be developed a little bit more, maybe that's a thing. But of course, that all assumes the terms of service don't require an arbitration. And that's one of the reasons probably that they're, going to, that they're asking for injunctive relief, because injunctive relief, you can get past an arbitration request. But unfortunately, it's not going to work. It very rarely does. So we'll see how it develops. But you know, for better or worse, Roblox probably has the better end of it, at least at the start. But at least for the moment, that brings the end of the discussion of this case. Thank you so much for being part of the Uncivil Law family. If you enjoyed this legal education content, please hit the subscribe button. It really helps the channel grow. We appreciate your continuing support. And until later, my friends, cheers and goodbye. Danielle says it's a very pointy tiara. It is pointy. I, I can I can see the I can see the point. It is in fact pointy. I'm not sure how dispositive that is to the analysis, but okay, yeah, it is it is pointy. Uh, yeah. <laughs>